Here is my courtyard fence. Not this, but this pile of timber. Over the last five or six months, our fence has been falling down. Despite repeated complaints to the property manager, nothing has been done about it. The owner simply does not want to fix it. Our backyard is now open to the street. Just the other day, a large dog wandered on in while my kids were playing out the back. Luckily, they ran inside and nothing bad happened. But this isn't the first time that it's happened. Basically, my kids can't play out the backyard unless an adult is out there actively patrolling the perimeter. But despite this, they decided to jack up the rent last month. Out of respect to myself, I refused to pay. I said I'm not signing the new lease if the owners are refusing to fix anything. The property manager just told us that if we don't sign, they'll basically kick us out. She said, we can easily find somebody else in this market. And that's the state of being a renter in Australia at the moment. No power. We're at the whim of greedy owners. Ultimately, we reached an agreement with the real estate agent saying that we are actively looking for our own property, and therefore they allowed us to stay on while paying our rent month by month until we find our own place, a so-called periodic lease. So why can this happen? Well, as many of you would know, house prices are rather crazy here in Australia at the moment. Start auxiliary power units. Retract gaseous oxygen vent arm. Activate main engine. Lift off. Yes, Australian house prices are rocketing up, at least according to the pundits. Australian house prices to rise by 15% this year, but slow in 2022. House prices reach yet another record level due to perfect storm of low interest rates, improving economy. Australia's housing boom rolls on with national home values lifting another 2.2% in May. Many people have told me that it's a horrible time to buy, but yet everyone's buying. Why? Well, it probably has something to do with record low interest rates. As rates go down, what goes up? House prices and debt. As it becomes cheaper to borrow, people borrow more, and inevitably house prices go up. Yes, Australians are in a record amount of debt, just so they can say that they are living the Australian dream. A belief that in Australia, home ownership can lead to a better life and is an expression of success and security. From my experiences in the last six months, it's become more of an Australian nightmare. People say it's just the market, but I want to call BS on that. This market has been heavily manipulated by government incentives. Federal Budget 2021 – Renters lose out in huge government cash splash. Consumer bodies are now warning that Australia's red-hot property market, which has seen prices rise at the fastest month-on-month -month rate in more than three decades, is preventing renters from being able to save for a deposit. Escalating housing prices are pushing more and more people into homelessness, including women and children escaping family violence, young people who can't stay at home, and older people on low incomes, especially women. Yes, this is what the Government of Australia does for its citizens. Let's the property market get out of control. It doesn't try to stop it, it actively encourages it. Some of you might be saying, but low interest rates are great for buyers, aren't they? Cheap mortgages are great. Well, a piece by The Conversation begs to differ. Paying off a home loan used to be easier than it looked. It's now harder. Here's why. For our parents, buying a home was an exceptionally good deal, not only because homes were cheaper – until the end of the 1990s, homes typically cost between two and three times household after-tax income – they now cost closer to five – but also because over time, the loan became easier to pay off. That isn't because mortgage rates were coming down, at times they were going up. It's because during our parents' times, wages and prices were climbing. It meant that even if someone of our parents' generation just squeaked through one of the bank's tests about their ability to make payments on a mortgage, a few years and lots of inflation and several big wage rises down the track, those mortgage payments shrank compared to everything else. So yeah, it's a whole lot of BS saying that low interest rates somehow help us. All they do is inflate property prices, reduce people's ability to save due to low deposit rates, and get people into a lifetime of debt. 
But maybe there's some hope for us on the horizon. Enter iron ore. Aussie house prices at risk from China shift on iron ore. Iron ore price fears Australian property will suffer after China move. How housing prices could crash if China takes revenge and cuts off Australia's iron ore. Here's the article from the Daily Mail. How housing prices could crash if China takes revenge and cuts off Australia's iron ore. And it's only a matter of time. OK, so perhaps it's a bit sensationalised, but let's read on. China threatens to cut off Australian iron ore exports in latest saga of trade war. Commodity used to make steel accounted for 39% of Australia's exports. Expert says Chinese reliance on Australian iron ore is strategically unviable. David Llewellyn Smith expects Australian property prices to tumble as a result. Iron ore prices last month hit record highs above $200 US a metric tonne, but property prices could crash in Australia should, should China be able to substantially source the commodity from somewhere other than Western Australia's Pilbara region. Whether China cuts off Australian iron ore is not in question, only the timing of it is, as well as what it will do to the Australian economy when it does. Property prices in May also reached record highs in 66 of Australia's 88 submarkets, with Sydney's median house value since January soaring by 15.1% to a record high $1.1 million, new CoreLogic data showed. Still, Mr Llewellyn Smith predicted Australian house prices would tumble and radically devalue versus the world via the collapsing currency. Make of that what you will. But interest rates aren't going to stay low forever. Here's an article on the ABC. House prices jump in May, CoreLogic says, as borrowers urge to refinance loans before interest rates rise. Rising house prices push out first home buyers. The rapid rise in housing values over the past six months or so is starting to have an effect on the type of buyers in the market. Looking at the ABS, Australian Bureau of Statistics, finance data, first home buyer lending has fallen 5% in the past two months. But my guess is that, with house prices rising as quickly as they are, first home buyers aren't going to be able to keep up in the market unless they've got significant help from parents or maybe access to a low deposit home loan. Ultra low fixed mortgage rates disappearing. While variable and short term fixed mortgage rates remain at or near record lows, longer term fixed rates are rising. Rate City said the last sub 2% four year fixed mortgage rate had now disappeared from the market, with Bank Vic lifting from 1.95 to 2.29%. I guess it's no surprise that monthly housing credit growth has been going up. People are madly getting into more debt, and perhaps I'll be joining them. My wife and I went to a mortgage broker recently, and we are able to secure a small home loan of about $100,000 to $150,000. But this means we need a very big deposit, which we have, but most of it is tied up in shares. As I don't know where the stock market is headed, I decided to sell half my shares. Over the last couple of years, I've been investing in this ETF, Vanguard Australian Shares Index, or VAS. I bought it about here and sold it about here. So yes, I've made a fairly tidy profit considering all the things that have happened over the last year or so. I averaged about 10-11% to year-on-year -year returns. Anyway, I've dumped all of that into a high-interest savings account, and I use that term liberally. I'm getting a massive 1.1% interest per year, but hey, at least my deposit is safe if the share market happened to tank. More news from the ABC. No winners in building materials shortage as builders, rich, vulnerable, all impacted. A nationwide shortage of building materials is putting pressure on Queensland's construction industry, with fears the building boom will claim several casualties. The building boom was meant to be a veritable gold rush for builders, but in a cruel twist, high demand, price increases and delays have been costing them dearly. Building delays are forcing tenants to renew their rental leases, worsening the housing crisis. Builders are under extreme pressure as they face financial and mental health implications because of delays. 
So as you can probably tell, the housing boom really hasn't helped many Australians. The government don't seem to care though, and continue to push policies that inflate house prices. They benefit the few at the expense of the many. It's awful, and I hope one day we see the error in our ways and start treating housing as we should, as something that we all need, not something that we make money off at the expense of others. 